UK Defence Secretary Grant Shapps has announced the allocation of 380 million euros to purchase over 10,000 drones for Ukraine's armed forces during his visit to Kyiv. During his third visit to Ukraine, Shapps, accompanied by Admiral Sir Tony Radikin, Chief of the UK Defence Staff, met with President Volodymyr Zelensky and Defence Minister Rustam Yumirev. There, he stated that the UK is allocating 380 million euros, 146 million euros more than previously announced, to supply over 10,000 drones, including mostly FPV drones, 1,000 combat UAVs, as well as reconnaissance drones and uncrewed surface vessels. Ukraine's armed forces are using UK donated weapons to unprecedented effect, to help lay waste to nearly 30% of Russia's Black Sea Fleet, Shap said. He also said, I was pleased to be able to offer my firm reassurance to President Zelensky on the UK's unwavering commitment to the brave people and military forces of Ukraine. The Ukrainian military are already deploying first-person view drones in the battlefield and they have become a key weapon for attacking Russian troops. The British government says these drones allow the operator the ability to finally control their movements in real time and have been successfully used to bypass Russian air defenses to hit their targets. The UK and Latvia lead the International Drone Coalition, formed within the framework of the Ukraine Defense Contact Group meetings. Earlier, Martin Harris, UK ambassador to Kyiv, said that UK-sponsored drones for Ukraine would be produced on the territory of both countries. A participant of the Atesh military partisan movement carried out a sabotage on the railway near Moscow. He organized an explosion to prevent the Russians from carrying out military supplies to the front, this is reported in the Telegram channel of the movement. They published there the footage and indicated the place of the sabotage. It is noted that the saboteur successfully destroyed the relay cabinet near the Golovkovo railway station. It is located in Solnechnogorsk district of Moscow region of Russia, this action hindered the movement of trains on the railway line around Moscow, which is used by the aggressor country for military purposes. Our goal is to stop the Putin regime's military supplies to the front line. It is possible to accomplish this. In order to do this, we need the help of people who are on the territory of the Russian Federation, Atesh pointed out, calling for people to join the movement. Interest in desertion is clearly rising in Russian army. The Russian anti-war Go Through the Forest project has declared February the 29th the day of the deserter to change the image of those who flee from the ranks of the Russian army in Ukraine from traitors and weaklings as the Kremlin wants people to believe and to show that leaving the ranks is an action of bravery and lover for one's country. Paul Goebel specialist on ethnic and religious questions in Eurasia said this. He recalls that Grigory Sverdlin, who organized a homeless shelter in Russia before fleeing the country after the start of the war, is the founder of the Go Through the Forest project. He says his group has been able to help 520 deserters, of whom approximately 70 percent have fled abroad, while the remainder are mostly in hiding inside Russia. Paul Goebel says that, since the start of the war, his group has received inquiries from more than 24,000 soldiers, of which 2,086 involves issues of desertion and the illegal crossing of the Russian state border. The highest number of such desertion questions, 284, came in January 2024. A year earlier, his group received only 28. Perhaps significantly approximately half of these potential deserters are men who signed on as professional soldiers and have either been horrified by what is going on at the front or are outraged that they have not been given the leave that they were promised and that Russian law requires. 
The activists also provide statistics on the types of crimes those the authorities catch, with charges short of desertion more common because they are easy to prosecute and get convictions. The FSB and the military command, they add, now try to keep those who try to desert in their units because they need the men and because where punishment is informal and often brutal. Those interested in desertion face far greater obstacles now than they did a year earlier, the activists say, and that fact may depress official statistics somewhat. But interest in desertion is clearly rising as Russia's war in Ukraine enters its third year.